to the Good Together podcast today. So you're probably familiar with Alicia from her acting career. She's currently starring in the Babysitter's Club series on Netflix, and she's also most known for her generation-defining role in Clueless. But in addition to all of her film and television credits, Alicia has been a vegan for years and is a dedicated activist in the health and wellness space. She's the author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Kind Diet, plus the sequel, The Kind Mama. She also just co-created the new My Kind Organics Vitamin line, which is the first ever food-based organic non-GMO vegan supplement, which sounds fascinating. So we're going to get into her eco-friendly journey now. So let's dive in. Um, so Alicia, welcome. Um, we know you've been acting since childhood, as I just mentioned, um, but now you're doing a lot of great work in the world of wellness and sustainability. So I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about how you became interested in the space. I um, I would say that my love of animals was how what got me into being health conscious. I you know, I was one of those people who loved animals, but ate them. And I did that for a long time and struggled with it. And then ultimately saw documentaries of how we raised our animals for food. And it was too heartbreaking and so alarming that no one had told me the innocence in me was really shattered that I would have thought if this kind of just torture and madness that's occurring for these creatures um, would you know, that if anyone saw any of that happen to a dog, no one would be okay with this, right? In our, in our country, obviously we do, there's dog meat in other countries, but when people, and people are always outraged by that. So we've decided that some animals are okay to eat and harm and torture and others are to be loved and made out with. And um, so, you know, it was that that got me. My, my love of animals was really what set me on this journey. And so I often think the animals saved me and that, you know, this is, I used to think this must just be really good karma because all of a sudden after making this choice for the animals, my skin cleared up. I had cystic acne, my, from going off of the birth control pill, you know, that thing, how it makes your skin so bad. Well, just, uh, you know, so you, you went on this journey, right? You decided to be vegan, skin started clearing up, the karma started happening. And then what happened? I stopped taking allergy shots that I was getting twice a week. I stopped my asthma inhaler. Um, all of these things really changed my nails that were so brittle and would fall, you know, you could bend them easily and they would fall apart all the time, you know, breaking, uh, they got so hard, hard as a rock. And my, um, eyes got really white, the whites of my eyes and, um, what else? Oh, and I felt just entirely different. I started walking around feeling very light and as if I had let go of all this sort of negative dark karma thing and also the actual sludge that's inside of you because when you're eating all that animal flesh and um you know that is rotting inside of your body right it takes 72 hours to get through if you left a piece of meat outside in the sun you know because it's 98 degrees right inside of our bodies it would completely be just um like moldy and disgusting after a very short period of time right it would get gross and that's what's happening inside of you so I just don't feel, I, I felt so different from that. I felt this lightness and I just felt so different. I felt lighter. I felt also really connected my, to myself. I felt, you know, we, as a, as a, as a woman, and I'm sure even as men too, but women having self-worth is not always the easiest thing. And when I was able to stand in my power and say no to what I didn't believe in, it gave me a very strong sense of self and grounded me. So basically, you know, the, the thing that I'm really picking up on is you went through a transformation when you decided to make this lifestyle change, right? Both physically, mentally, um, you know, almost spiritually, you, you could even say, I would bet. And so one of the things that we talk a lot about on this podcast is the transformation that we all go through when we choose to make small steps uh, every day to create change. And so I love that, you know, plant-based lifestyle choices really lined up with, with your values, right? You're an animal lover. And so I wonder, okay, so you got started because you started to think about the animal welfare um, behind, you know, what your choices were. I wonder, have you ever thought more about like the environmental impact um, of going plant-based? Because it's something that our readers ask a lot about. Yes. Yeah, so it, it, what I'm giving you the, this beginning, where it goes is, yeah. oh my goodness. 
So this is just when I'm 21 years old and I'm finally committing to this change for the animal's sake. I even thought perhaps I won't be healthy doing it. Mm, interesting. Perhaps, per, I, I really, I'll never eat anything yummy again, maybe. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. These were things I really genuinely thought, but I didn't care. The animal welfare thing was enough to really, really motivate me. And I couldn't, I couldn't contribute to the suffering anymore. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and say, you're a good person and you love animals and then be contributing to what I was doing. So that was it. Then I had all these health benefits that were miraculous. And then I started looking into it and found that, you know, so many doctors were talking about it. There was so much uh, research from Harvard and Oxford about why this plant-based diet was so good for you. There were athletes who were doing it to benefit um, their, their performance. They, they, were, they didn't care about the animals. They were doing it for their bodies. And then, you know, Woody Harrelson came along into my life and you know, I was feeling quite lonely as an activist and I kept seeing him at animal activist events. And I just thought I should talk to him because then maybe I'll be able to have someone else to relate to. And we had this beautiful conversation and I was telling him all about the cows and how upset I was. And he said, you know, why don't you come to Peru with me and my wife and we're going to help save the rainforest and, you know, just come. And so I met him for the first time properly in Peru. And wow. He really was my inspiration, he and his wife, about the environment. I had never, you know, before that I'd heard things about the environment, but to be honest, I was a really young girl and it was enough me making this change. I was already, you know, against fur, not using anti-dissection, not using any products that have been tested on animals. And, na- and I was vegan and I was rescuing dogs and cats. I had a lot on my plate. I was already doing a lot. My brain sort of thought, I don't want another thing to have to worry about with the environment. <laughs> yeah. And I just didn't, I was completely ignorant, to be honest. I just didn't know, you know, so what I heard didn't move me yet. It was just felt like another thing I had to deal with and I couldn't. And then, and I didn't know, I didn't have any real inspiration at the time. So it wasn't motivating me. Right. Sure. But once he started to explain things to me as we, you know, as I got to know him better, he would talk about the, the that when you're putting something on your skin, that it's going into your skin. So if I was using chemical products, for example, I'd say, well, I don't want to waste them. And he'd say, but you're now putting it in your skin and you're poisoning yourself essentially. And then what about where is it going in the earth? And so then I started to understand that. And then I, I mean, that's just a simplified way of explaining how I began to understand the environmental. We were going through the rainforest and seeing all the clear cutting that was being done to raise um, food for cattle, whereas all of those fields could have been used to feed people. And so I started to understand, aside from the environmental impact, but how, you know, we see these children who are starving to death all around the world. There's 9 million people who die a year from hunger and no one blinks an eyelash. The last six years, 9 million people have died a year. It's just not even something people talk about or seem to care about, but none of them should die. They're dying because we take their food and we feed it to animals. The amount of food it requires, the, the resources required to create one pound of beef, one 16 ounce steak, could have fed an entire village of people. Thousands of people could have been fed from the water usage, the resources involved, and all the grain and, 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 and food that was fed to those animals. So we have a very inefficient use of resources. So, yes, environmentally, I have, you know, I've become very quickly in my journey, I became an environmental activist as well, because I started to understand the whole picture that not only is it, I think sometimes people think of environmentalists as, well, I think they love to, I think greedy corporate business people like to put it in some kind of, um, you know, patronizing term. They like to say things like, oh, you're scared of the polar bears getting hurt. You know, oh, poor polar bears. They make fun of that. Or they'll say, well, um, you know what, you just don't want your pretty places to be harmed. There, but, the, but there are so many reasons to be concerned about the earth. There are the simple things like selfish joys of seeing the beauty in this world and see it get ruined, right? And we see that often where you go to a place that you love that 20 years was so beautiful, 20 years ago was so beautiful, and now it's quite destroyed from environmental damage. So we see it with our own eyes that way. But then there's also the immediate life and death threatening aspect, whether that's children and people who are dying from pollution, or it's the imminent danger of the seventh, I mean, sorry, the sixth mass extinction. Um, 
So there are, you know, ocean acidification. Um, we know that 51, about 51% of global warming and climate change is caused by animal agriculture. To me, that is so profound so that there's a lot of things we can't do things about, right? I don't know that we could ask people to stop flying airplanes and stop driving cars. We can improve the cars and airplanes that we, that we use, but it's very difficult to you know, ask our society to change that. I don't know that that would happen. The same way a lot of people would say, I don't think you would ask people to change how they eat. But, but when what you choose to eat not only heals the earth, but it also heals your body and it also stops torture and you know, destruction of animals and it also feeds people who would be starving to death, I think that's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I feel like um, you know, this, this cultural shift we talk about is, of course, it's necessary to create change. But it's also something that we receive a lot of pushback on, right? Like you just said, um, if we said, you know, nobody can be in an airplane or an automobile anymore, people would, they would revolt. Um, and we often get questions from from listeners. Um, and, and I myself choose to be plant based some of the week and sometimes I don't. So I'm curious to know, like, how do you have conversations with people who are not 100% plant based? Like, what are some tips that you give them in terms of like, incorporating more plant based foods into their diet? Well, first of all, I'm just so grateful that you choose to be plant-based day, plant-based a few days a week because imagine if everybody did that. You know, if everyone tried instead of just saying no. Exactly. Right? The more people, because obviously it sounds like you care and you want to, and you know it's the right thing to do, but perhaps you just haven't. And I would be really curious to know what's making you not get there all the way yet. Sure. Because that would probably help me to speak to it and be able to help you. But I think... Um, any step in that direction is so beautiful and wonderful and should be applauded. And I am such a believer in not judging people's journey. It, it can take a while. And if you used to eat haagen ice cream every single day and meat two or three times a day, and now you're only having haagen once a week, yeah. why would you need haagen when you can have the delicious ice creams that are out there? But if you are, if you, once you start lessening it, you are making such an important choice. So I would beg, urge, plea with anyone that's even considering it to just, just make baby steps. And, and, and the first thing I would do is ask you to read The Kind Diet, the book that I wrote a long time ago, because it'll give you so much information that will just arm you so that you know what choices you're making. So that it's not about arriving at the end being perfect because that's boring. I mean, perfect is nice too, but whatever. Like it's, <laughs> nobody's perfect. I'm not, no. perfect we all make, we all have hiccups, right? But, and being flexible, I think is important as well. There is a certain um, being understanding and compassionate for wherever someone is. It's a, it's a, it takes work and it takes practice, but, but it's, it's really worthy. And celebrating every little step in the right direction is massive. So I'm super grateful. And I would just say, if you read The Kind Diet, you'll be armed with information that then when you make your choices, you're making them from such an informed place with the ease of knowing how to do it. Because in The Kind Diet, I show, I walk you through all the steps of how to do this easily. Like, so why don't you tell me for fun, what is it that you think keeps you from going all the way right now? What are the things that trip you up? Yeah, that's a great question. I think some of it is just kind of old habits in terms of recipes and not necessarily being as inspired as I could be. So that's one, uh, one reason I would say. Um, another reason our, our, our listeners and readers often tell us is because of their families. So maybe they're the only one in their family or their maybe even friend group that has those values. So those are like two main uh, concerns we hear a lot about. I love that. Let me speak to those. First of all, being, I mean, so how I would want to inspire you with cooking and recipes is if you were to tell me sort of what the things are that you love making. I would want to help inspire you to make them this, you'd still make them, yep. but you would make them in a more conscious way. Right. Yep. Exactly. So there are, you know, at this point, cheese has come so far. Yes. I can say that 10 years ago, I would tell you just don't bother with any vegan cheese, right? Like, do it, <laughs> yeah. do it. Um, but we have the most incredible cheeses now. I mean, 
there's really no taste sacrifice anymore. It was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we were sacrificing when we didn't eat cheese. Okay. But we're not <laughs> anymore. There are so many amazing ones. And, and same with butter and same with, um, vegan A's, you know, mayonnaise. So those things are easy to switch out and veggie broth and chicken. You can flip out chicken broth with veggie broth any day. And it's yep. perfect. And, um, and there's so many plant-based proteins to use. Mostly I'm using beans, tempeh and tofu. Um, and I play, and seitan, I play around with seitan sometimes, but I'm not messing with the fake stuff as much. That's just treat food. Um, but I would say, so if I would want to seduce you into this world, I would want to take you out and have you try, like date all the veggie restaurants in your neighborhood. If you're in LA or New York or Atlanta or any of those kind of major cities, you have so many options and kind of getting used to and trying all these new foods will make you realize like there's a place in LA called Nick's on Beverly. When you eat there, or if you eat at Crossroads or Sugar Taco or Donut Friend, you would be so blown away by the food. It's just, it's just so insanely delicious that there's no, you don't miss anything and you go, oh, okay. So that's inspiring and exciting, right? So dating your, your good veggie restaurants in town will help you to see what's possible. And then on my Instagram, I have recipes and I'm always showing the food that I'm eating. And then I'm sure there's tons of veggie people doing the same thing. So there's so much inspiration out there in terms of what to make. I'm never at a loss for, um, there's never a dull moment in terms of what, I can get sick of food just because I'm going through a funk. You know, of sometimes course. you're I'm just sick of food. But, <laughs> but when I, anytime I start looking at my endless amounts of cookbooks, I just go, oh, I've never tried that. So there's always something new to try, right? Yeah. We talk a lot about swaps too, right? Starting with a recipe that might not be vegan and thinking about the swaps. And I'm actually, um, I'm based in Seattle now, but I used to be from Texas and I love good Mexican food. And um, I had a chance to go to Gracias Madre, where there's one in San Francisco. And I think they've got a few outposts in LA. And I mean, I was blown away at the Mexican food there. I brought my husband also like Texas meat eater right here. And he was like, this is amazing. So I definitely think there's such value in exposing both yourself and other people to these swaps. Um, and like, as we get into the, the the point about family and friends, I think, you know, this is summertime. We have a lot of grilling and barbecue opportunities coming up. Like, look at different swaps you can make. Even Costco now sells Impossible Burger, which is, I love Impossible Burger. I know it's like one of those fake treats that you just mentioned, but I think it's kind of a good way for people to get into it, right? <laughs> yeah, I just did a burger blog on my website. So if, if anybody is looking for the perfect burger, I did a taste test of all the Impossible Burger oh. um, Beyond and all these other ones that I'd never really even heard of. And the results are very interesting. Okay, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so on my website, I have that blog. And also I think on my Instagram, there's the the little movie we made of it. But I think, you know, the way I've always addressed it with family and friends is, you know, I don't want, I certainly don't want to be a pain in the butt to anyone, even though I know that what I'm doing is very righteous and important and, you know, it's for the good of everyone. It's for all of everyone's good. But I don't want to make myself difficult. So what I try to do is if I was going to go to someone's house and they were not vegan, I would say, and they invited me over, I might say, hey, can I bring something? Because I'm vegan and I want to make something delicious and not hassle you. That gives them an opportunity to say, what? No, I'm going to make all, like sometimes they get excited and they make the food vegan and then that's exciting. Or they say, oh, yeah, no, please bring something. And then you have an opportunity to blow their minds. Yes. You know, yesterday I brought cupcakes to my kids' school. Um, a few of the parents were asked who would like to bring something. And I always want to do the food because even though it takes so much work, I was up frosting these darn cupcakes so late at night. But my, I see it as an act of activism. I see it as an opportunity to inspire them. So someone had a regular cake, someone had regular brownies, and then I brought two sets of cupcakes and they were all gone. The other stuff wasn't. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I just think, and I had a little sign, it said vegan and the other one said vegan and gluten-free. So I, I don't know that they were the most amazing of anything I've ever made. They, I was trying some new recipes, but 
the point is they were really good and everybody ate it. So I think the more people are introduced and turned on by, so if I was going to go to a party at someone's house, I would bring my Cristini from the kind diet. These Cristini are insane or my artichoke dip or my um, bean guacamole dip. Those things I challenge any meat eater not to be blown away by. And I think just when they start to eat delicious things and they see how easy it is and you're in your, you feel good, you are well, you're healthy. You, I just think it kind of inspires naturally. And I don't, the family thing is tricky because of course we, we're so divided about so many things in our world today. You're not allowed to have different opinions about anything. And it's really sad because what is this world if we can't have good communication and learn from each other? Um, I really like hearing other people's point of views. I like it. I learn that way. I like seeing things debated so that I can decide for myself what is best. That is our right. And I feel like this whole, you know, we're divided about everything. And, 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 and me being a vegan environmentalist who ate my placenta, who is a, is a home birther, you know, all, I'm just in this tiny, tiny little uh, section of division, I suppose. But I, but I feel so, I feel so a part of everything, and I think it's the attitude, right? So if I just think that this, I, it's normal. This is what it is, and I want to share it, but I'm not going to throw it down your throat. And I'm sure I don't get too invited to a lot of parties because probably they just want to eat their thing and not feel bad about it. So I probably just don't get included. Yeah. <laughs> hope not but I mean one of the reasons we started this podcast actually and really started the Brightly platform in general is because we did see a lack of space for people to be able to debate these topics right um you hear so many different sides from people um actually we one example of this was we partnered with a vegan um food delivery brand and my co-founder and I were super excited to try it because they had some amazing food that was dropped at our doorstep but then we heard from a lot of people in the comments that it was too much plastic, right? And it was kind of the worst thing ever. And when we talk about eco-friendly living and sustainability, we recognize that it's very, very difficult to get to perfection. We actually say plan it over perfection all the time because in our minds, there is so much room for everyone to grow. And the more that you can just adopt this learner's mindset, even if you you know have been living an eco-friendly lifestyle to your, your, your point for years, I think there's just so much value in that, especially when you go to a party. So I love that piece. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Um, so kind of moving into um, sort of a new venture that we wanted to talk with you about too was, so I know you partnered with Garden of Life um, a few years ago to launch My Kind Organics, which is a really interesting line of vitamins and supplements. And so I was curious to know, like, what inspired you to create this new line um, and sort of this new product? Um, you know, we, we've heard about your apple cider vinegar gummies. I think that's pretty interesting. Thank you for asking. Um, I, you know, I wrote The Kind Diet. I wrote The Kind Mama. I was on this real health journey. And when I was, well, The Kind Mama was happening when this idea came about. So I was pregnant and my midwife told me I needed to take a prenatal. And I was pretty anti-vitamin at that time. I just knew that they can be quite toxic to the liver and um, that I felt the people in my life who took them seemed neurotic to me. It was just so much, so much vitamin. <laughs> it's just the whole thing was so annoying. And, um, and so I just didn't need, I felt like I was really eating well and I didn't need them. And so I said that to my midwife. I said, I don't really see why I would need a prenatal. I eat so well. And she said, well, what about just those days when you're traveling or you can't get access to the foods that you want sometimes? How about have it as an insurance policy for those days or those days that you just eat like naughty and you mess up and you don't get all the nutrients you need, right? And I thought, oh, well, that, I can buy into that. I will take a prenatal for that. Great. So let me go find one. She says she recommends this one. I look at it and I go, it's made of pure chemicals. And she said, but it's vegan. I said, I know, but is there one that isn't, that's vegan? And not made of chemicals? She goes, oh, I don't know. So then I started asking my friends, who's the, is there anything that you know of out there that's clean and pure? And it was, there was a, there were a few brands, about one or two that were the main winners that everyone told me about that were supposed to be the cleanest. And I started looking at those ingredients and they had chemicals in them too. And I was really surprised, just really genuinely surprised like how is it you you innocently as a 
as a um, consumer, you innocently, we all just go, we're all just trying to survive. So I think most of the time we're not thinking about anything, you know? And so these, you know, whether, where your animal, where their food comes from, what's happening to the planet, there's all these things we just don't either want to know or think about. But when you go to buy vitamins, I think you assume that that's something that's good for you. You're purchasing a vitamin, it should be good for you. But it's just not. They're they're just they're not, and that's why they get the reputation of hurting the liver because they're chemical, toxic little pills in your body, right? So I couldn't believe it. There was nothing I would that was I was willing to take. So I just thought this is weird. The food, the the one vitamin that is the closest to being clean is still less healthy than the food I eat on a daily basis. So I thought I've got to make this. I got to make it for myself. I've got to make it for all the mommies who are trying to make babies right now. And I got to make it for people who want clean things because this is outrageous. So I went looking for a partner and I, I found garden of life and we decided to build my kind organics together. And, um, you know, based off of my, my, my kind diet, my kind mama, my kind website, the kind life. So they, we, we decided to make this company together and they were excited to try and do this. And so we built clean, we had to start by creating clean tablet technology, which is how you wrap the vitamins in a way so that they don't have to have any chemicals in them. And, um, and then we, then we went on to do gummies and we thought, okay, every gummy on the market is loaded. Like the most popular gummies on the market are loaded with sugar Yes. And loaded with gelatin. I've seen this before. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It so turns you would, off immediately. <laughs> why would you want to give that to your kid, right? Or yourself? If I'm going to have sugar, I want it to be at least like a chocolate type cake or something. I don't know. It's got to be <laughs> worth it. That's right. I don't want it to be in the form of my vitamin every day. And um, and it's like two teaspoons. Per, I mean, it's crazy the amount of sugar that we're using. So anyway, we decided to make gummies and our gummies, I got to tell you, they are so delicious. The children's gummies, the multi, the multis for men and women. We have gummies in elderberry. We have gummies in turmeric and they are all made with our gelatin is, um, it's beautiful. It's organic, um, apple pectin and our sweetener is organic peaches and apples. So it's so pure and they're delicious. So that's exciting. And then we decided to do herbals. And that was our whole line of, you know, adaptogens, uh, ashwagandha, turmeric, our sleep well vitamins, which I love so much. They're, when you feel like your brain's a little too activated, you can just take this. It's no, It's got no hangover. So you're not getting that melatonin hangover. You don't feel like it's awful, right? People think that's natural, but it's not good for you. So this is just this beautiful light feeling. It just, you, you don't feel it at all. You just sleep and it's well. So, um, and then the apple cider vinegar, what that is about is basically that, um, oh goodness, sorry, that didn't work at all. Um, the apple cider vinegar thing is that I started to look around and notice that apple cider vinegar was all the rage. Now, truly it's been that way since the beginning of time because Hippocrates, Hippocrates used apple cider vinegar. But but we've all understood this to be this very healing thing. And some people really love it and some people don't care about it as much and whatever you fall on that spectrum. Um, but for the people who really get excited about apple cider vinegar, some of them don't want to drink it. They don't like the taste. So they were a few years ago, some companies came out with these gummies and people were going crazy for them. Now we looked at them and we went, everyone's really excited about this. And yet these are made with all kinds of crazy sugar totally chemicals and gelatin and not organic and they're not non-GMO verified and they're not food-based. They're, they're just same old, same old. So we got excited about providing what we do with all of my kind organics. I just got excited about creating a healthy version of this thing that everybody was really wanting. So that's how our apple cider vinegars were born. And, um, Whole Foods invited us as the chosen one to be in their place. They have no others. And um, and they we have it in a diet for like a weight loss kind of for, diet formula. We have we target um, energy, we target probiotic, and then we have our original formula. And some of my friends who eat them say uh, to me that they want to eat the whole bottle. It's so delicious. <laughs> there you go. That's how you know you did a great job. It's like candy, yeah. basically. You're like, but please don't eat the whole bottle. 
like you, you don't have to listen to the four a day. You can go a little overboard, but don't, no, the whole bottle's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm one of those people who has read a ton about apple cider vinegar, and I just can't get past the smell and the taste. So I'm going to have to give these a try because, like, I know that it's amazing for your skin and there's all these great benefits of it. But yeah, I'm one of those people that I just like, even sometimes I'll use it like in a almost like a paste with a, other uh, compounds for like a, a face mask. But even then, like sometimes like I'm like the smell kind of gets me. So I'm glad to know that you're, you're solving for that. That's awesome. Yep. It was made for you. <laughs> Very great. <laughs> That's great to know. So yeah, I mean, I think, you know, supplements and, you know, there, there's so much information out there um, and there's good information, bad information, et cetera. And I think, you know, when we started to see this, the you know, the overall popularity kickoff, I want to say like, I mean, it's been big for probably 20 years now, but I'd say in the last 10, we've seen more, you know, adaptogens and everything kind of come center stage. So I, I'm very encouraged by the fact that your team not only does the research, but you're also trying to give people these, you know, these formulas that they want in a really non- destructive way to their bodies and the planet. That's really cool. I wonder um, if you can tell me a little bit more about the science. Like, did you even, were you even prepared for the amount of research and stuff you'd have to go into it? Or, you know, you just kind of set off in, in, in a, you know, pursuit of solving this problem. I think that'd be interesting. Well, two things I wanted to say. I thought back to your comment earlier about people complaining about vegan things being packaged in plastic. Okay. Because I was thinking about how, how excruciating it is, you know, when I was, we started with all glass bottles, right? Cause I wanted it to be all glass and all of my packaging is completely cons post-consumer um, paper, soy ink. Everything is so conscious down to the last drop with the product. Unfortunately, at some point we had to make a decision that I was not a, at all happy about, but it is, necessary. We found that our bottles, because they were glass, so much was breaking and that the amount of waste that was required to package the bottle to keep it safe was so much more environmentally damaging than just using a recycled plastic bottle. Now this really upsets some people and I understand because they're going, I don't want plastic and I don't want plastic either. But at least I can say we're using, I think at this, we, we keep inching it up, trying to use more and more um, recycled plastic in our, because the, it's, it, that's the science is figuring out how to get it with as much post-consumer waste, but where it still doesn't leach anything in and stays medically sound so that when you're eating, um, when you're taking them in, they have nothing leached into it. So that is a, that's a science in itself. So I think we're up to about 60 or 70% post-consumer waste. Do I wish there was none? Yes, but then we couldn't provide this because what, which is worse. So you've got the environmental destruction of all the things to keep them precious and then they break all the time versus this percentage. It's the scale. So we always are doing the best we can. I'm exactly. always thinking it. How can you do the best you can? Um, and, you know, sometimes you're not going to like aspects of things you know, there's many things in our daily lives that we all purchase and buy that are owned by somebody you don't like, but we love the thing that we have. And if we say no to it because of who worked, who's behind it, then we don't get to have the thing. So it's like, you know, and, and that doesn't mean that that person is, what it sometimes means is that that, that person who's behind it is interested in they're testing out. I want That's to be able to do better things. So we have to be a bit more open-minded in our, I, I remember making hemp bags. I, years ago, I made these beautiful hemp bags for EcoTools and they were hemp and recycled plastic and um, soybean oil and just clean to the T, okay? But they lived in Target. So how did I, how did I, stomach that well because the person who is shopping at target has a chance to reach for this vinyl nasty thing next to it that's so toxic to the planet or they could reach for this beautiful thing that's sitting right next to it and so and it wasn't even the target part that bothered me we also had to make them in china and then you could argue well why is it being made in china well we can't make it here or you can't buy it so you have to weigh out 
Sometimes it's just more complicated. Oh, it's so, so complicated. There's so many trade-offs. I mean, that the business owners make when they do product development. Um, you know, you talk about breakage with glass. There's also the weight problem and like how much more, you know, how many more carbon emissions are generated when shipping. I mean, there's so many different things that go into it. Um, and I think for us too, we actually have very popular content around going to Target going yes. to Costco and finding yeah. things the that are thing. eco-friendly because yes. there's a question of affordability. There's a question of accessibility. Like some people don't have access to whole foods. So I think, you know, just the more that we can tell these bigger corporations by using our dollars and saying, Hey, I made the choice today to pick the eco tools over the vinyl piece that target's going to take notice, right? Like they just came out with a fair trade denim line, which is amazing. Really so like the more of these types of things that we can get the larger corporations to pay attention to the better. So we're totally here for that too. So we definitely applaud all of those solutions. That's great. Awesome. Well, um, you know, as we kind of wrap up the episode, we typically like to ask our guests a few different, you know, closing questions that they're all always the same. So, I wanted to know, you know, aside from your, your, your plant-based diet, how else do you try to live sustainably and ethically every day? For me, it, it's every single choice and every single decision that I make. Um, and I do have my, there are areas in which I can improve and we will always, we all that, can. right? Yeah. So I, you know, I, when I go to the farmer's market now and I always have brought my cloth bags, but we are in a, because of what's been happening over the last year, they're wrapping everything in plastic at the farmer's mm. market. And this is really disturbing to me. Um, so I, I end up coming home with some plastic and I remember posting um, my farmer's market finds and people, you know, I understand they, they think like I do, I would do the same thing. Why is there plastic? Yep. And I go back and I said, I wish there was no plastic, but I can't control it. It's not, I'm literally at the farmer's market and they are wrapped this way. I didn't wrap it, never use that, you know? So all I can do is continue to reuse them. But my home I use, I have gray water, gray water, I highly recommend. Um, I tried to do rain catchment, but to be honest, Los Angeles, that's kind of a waste of money. There's not enough rain. Seattle would be a great place to do rain catchment. Yeah, hey, I'll try it out. <laughs> but rain catching is beautiful. I hate that any, it breaks my heart that any rain goes down the drain because it all would just be going into the soil. And we've made all these concrete jungles, so it all just rolls off. And so I you, I was trying to do rain catchment, but I live in a hill, so it's not ideal. Ultimately, gray water solved the problem. So every time I take a bath, a shower, or wash my hands upstairs in this one particular area in my room, I mean, in my, in my bathroom, all that water feeds all my fruit trees. And so it saves about 40,000 gallons of water a year. It's the way they do the math on it is really interesting. And there's a great company called Gray Corps. I think they're called Gray Corps. Gray Corps? I think they're called Gray Corps. And um, they, uh, they do this. And um, it's really exciting how much energy you save. The transport, you were talking about transport, the transport of water from home to home. It's so difficult. So keeping it in your property, solar panels, electric car, um, I grow my veggies. Um, I go to the farmer's market. I, um, I obviously eat plant-based. You said that. Everything I purchase, I don't, you know, I, all my clothes, this is made by Mara Hoffman. She's oh, a yeah. good Love Mara. I, yeah. On my website, I celebrate and encourage all the, I always try to find the most stylish, beautiful things from all the eco designers. Um, there are some beautiful companies out there doing great work who are using uh, mushroom leather. And yes. um, so I just, every single choice, my home is made of all reclaimed. I, I go vintage shopping in Texas at the Round Top. Oh I yes, love Round Top, love it. Been there before. <laughs> yeah, I've been twice. I'm, I love it so much. So my home is everything, the tables, the things. And then, and then you know, the couch, this is every single thing you, I make. I, I didn't want there to be any wool in it. I didn't want them to be any, um, what's it called? Uh, not fine. Uh, uh, down. Well, that for sure. Yeah. But, um, oh goodness, there's a chemical they put in every single couch and I can't think of what it's called right now. I know what you're talking about too. Oh, we'll <laughs> think about it. We'll put it in the show notes, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you really just think holistically, right? Like that's the theme. Every time you said it earlier, spending your dollar, if I'm going to spend a dollar, where am I putting it? Just knowing. And I do believe in supporting. I don't only eat at vegan restaurants. I love vegan restaurants, but I love supporting the ones who just are regular restaurants who do really great vegan food. 
I love the idea of supporting all of that. And, um, and I'm just really excited when someone is making the effort to make some, I, I think the easiest way to solve all of our consumer problems would be the carbon tax that we tried to introduce when Obama first ran for office and it was shut down so quick. Sorry, when he became right before he became president, when he was running for office, he, what got me so excited was this carbon taxing and he may not have been the first person to bring it up, but anyway, that's in my, in my time, he's the one I remember. And then it never got, it never came to life, but we need to, car, to the carbon tax concept of saying you're a company that is causing problems. You are destructive. You're, you're hurting the lakes, the waters, you know, Riverkeeper Alliance, Waterkeeper Alliance, these places that are protecting the water and cleaning up the mess that they do. And if we could just say, hey, you can continue to do this, but you're going to be taxed. You're going to be taxed because you cannot, this is harming us. It's harming the people destroying their water resources, making them sick, right? If we could make them responsible and then on the flip side, reward companies and say, wow, your whole company's run on solar panels? That's amazing. Oh my goodness, your company is being so thoughtful of every ingredient. You know, there would be levels of how, how you get graded, right? And for everything that you did good, you got points for good and everything that you did naughty to the earth, you would be that way products would just, I feel like we could really make a change in how, um, how we make things. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. And I think it's, it's the carrot over, the, well, you need some carrots and you need some sticks. <laughs> that would be the way I'd describe that a little bit. But I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's definitely regulatory issues, but there's also things that we can do as consumers. Um, and then really the, the last question I have for you, and you kind of already mentioned already, but it's one that we love to end on because it's a fun one, which is, you know, what is exciting you the most about the sustainable and eco-friendly living movement right now? Um, I think you probably have a really interesting answer here because you've been in it yourself for so long and have seen kind of the shift. So like, what is really exciting to you about it right now? I mean, because I'm a true, true activist at heart, I'm so passionate and I just want change so much. I want truth to be, I want everybody to wake up to the truth. I want people to be critical thinkers and think for themselves and not buy into what they're told. I don't want people watching the news anymore. I want people to wake up to what's real and do their research. Because if you listen to the common voice, it's going to tell you, eat me eat dairy. It's good for you. Oh, great. The earth's fine. You know, oh, you should be scared. There's a whole, this thing you should be scared of. They're just going to keep like brainwashing you with whatever they want to keep you numb. They want us all to wake up and make, and use our brains. And if someone says, Hey, I'm not sure that's so true. Listen and go, Hmm, wait, what? Let me look into that. I want to look into that. I don't know. And then just be open to the idea that not everything we know to be true is true. And so what I get excited about right now is that I feel like some of those band-aids or, 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 or eye masks are being lifted off and people are waking up a bit to what's going on. And, and I've been in it for so long, wanting the truth and wanting kindness and wanting people to have the best and not for animals not to be tortured. I want peace so much for the world that I, I'm so excited by the small changes I'm seeing. You know, Greta, that's amazing. Yes. The fact that that young girl got such a voice, you know, I was saying the same things as her, not as well, but I was saying the same things as her when I was 14 and 16, but no one would listen, you know, and I didn't sound the same as she did. She, she has a very clear informed voice at that age. And, but, but there's many of us who have been working on this for so long and people who come before me for so long that to see her get so far and have her be so impactful is just like, I could cry. And to see, um, People like Kim Kardashian and Beyonce and Jay Z being vegan. These are these are the small joys that <laughs> are huge joys for me. That we just see more and more and more people waking up to this. When when Bill Clinton went vegan and it saved his life, you know, when because he had like triple no, quadruple heart. He had something really major happen with his heart, and um, and um, so. 
when you see people waking up all around to these things, I think it's really exciting and I, it's no longer original. This is not some original thing that I'm talking about and bringing mainstream. Back in the day, Letterman and Leno thought I was an alien talking about being vegan and talking about the environment. And now I'm just another person talking about even though I was doing it a long time ago, I'm one of just many, many people talking about it. And that is really exciting. You know, it's, it's, we have made a lot of progress and cheese, vegan cheese. <laughs> I love that. We're, we're going to end with that one. Vegan <laughs> cheese. Because the vegans have been, you know, wrongly suffering from not having good cheese for a long time. And now we have such good cheese. I mean, it's just everywhere you turn, there's good cheese. That's amazing. Well, you have inspired me to go out and try some new vegan cheese. Um, okay. Because I'll admit it kind of scared me for a little bit. So oh, I'm going to go out and try scared. that. You should have been scared. But there's some really good ones. And I'm going to do a blog very soon on the like my winners of all the cheese found. So you should check okay, it out. Okay, well, I'll check it out. And listeners, um, you can find Alicia's uh, blog at The Kind Life. Um, she, she does some amazing posts over there. And we just had such a great time chatting with you today, Alicia. So we'll, we'll be excited to share this with our, with our listeners and get them as excited about plant-based living as you are. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.